Welcome, my name is Scott. Thank you for taking the time to explore WeVideo, a video ed editing web application with me. I am particularly excited by this app as it pushes the boundaries of what a cloud-based collaborative application can be. Just a few short years ago, the thought of pushing memory-hungry processor-intensive tasks to the cloud and expecting anything close to real-time performance seemed beyond reach. WeVideo is certainly approaching this eventuality. Another motivating force in this pursuit stems from conversations that I've had with former colleagues around this very topic. One team in particular enjoys documenting their students' explorations with various STEM projects and sharing their collective efforts via video compilations with parents and other faculty. From time to time, they even take their show on the road presenting at various conferences and workshops around New England. Their current approach to video production works for them, though something a bit more streamlined and a bit closer to their Google Docs experience would be nice. The ability to share, collaborate, and create together, regardless of time or place, would be even better. For this tutorial, I will create a bit of an outtake reel from some first grade STEM adventures. I will now walk you through the sequence of steps and general workflow that will get you started in WeVideo. Once you've logged on to WeVideo, whether it's a paid account or otherwise, you'll see a page that looks something like this. This is your home page in WeVideo. Home in the upper left corner. And depending upon how much work you've done to date and so forth, various items will be on this window. In fact, from here, and we'll talk about this a little more in a sec, but you can create a new project. And a project is really just a container that holds a bunch of bits and pieces that you've been working with on videos that relate to a particular topic. And video edit is an individual edit of video. In this case, we don't really need those um, I've already set up a project, one called Penguins there, is the one we'll be working with. We have some media in place, although we will be uploading a bit more. And videos. So videos are completed, published videos. This is the only one that I have thus far. So I'm going to go to media now and we're going to upload some more video. So I'm going to go over here to the plus sign in the lower right corner of the screen and go to upload and we can drag and drop files there but I'll actually be importing from Google Drive. So, clicked on the upload button and I know the file I have starts with SOS and I believe yeah the one I wanted to look at is buoyancy. There are a lot of SOS's in there that's from one of the teachers. These are actually all shared files with me so They're not files I originally created, which is part of what's really cool. So now that file, Buoyancy, is uploading. And that's it. It's all done. And it'll take different amounts of time. What it's doing is putting it, um, uploading it to WeVideo to their servers. Um, at this point, you could upload more files. If you're efficient when you're doing a whole project, you can upload multiples at a time, walk away, and just let it run. Um, but in this case, we don't really need to do that. So, we have a few different files that we've uploaded. SOS Buoyancy is over here. Now let's go back to our project and see how things are looking. Let's see. Here, the Penguins project, and we have Project Media. Let's see how much we have at the moment. 
We have this silly looking picture there again. SBC static, SOS buoyancy, image 2024, and another one, another SOS. Um, so a couple of these I can see are tank tests. So why don't we take a look at those and think about what we can do with those in terms of a new video. Now, here we have our project video. Let's go for this one, 2024. And all we do is drag the, oh, sorry, drag the icon, and bring it down, and when we get down here, it'll drop right in to the video band. And so if we start running it, we'll see the picture. Oh, it doesn't weigh very much at all. Okay, so, so that's, that's Susie. There's a difference in how it goes So that's slide, one. Being heavier helps it go down. Of the penguins. All right. So that's one of the penguin videos. Let's see if we have another one as well. Let's see if we do have another one. Uh, it's another SOS one. Slide not. Let's drag that one down. Two different. Okay, two different angles. Two different penguins. It looks like. <laughs> well, <laughs> here's the other one. Let's see. <laughs> now that one was nice. So, notice that simply by overlapping the videos, the one on the top actually prevented the one in video track one prevented the one in video track two from being visible while it was running. Now, that's not generally the way you would want to edit. Instead, what you want to do is bring the playhead back to wherever it is you're going to be going. And maybe a lot of this lead up to this is not really something you need to see, right? So maybe we can let her get there. And maybe that's a good place to split the clip. And let's see. <laughs> there. Because that's kind of cute. That's kind of funny. Now, we could take that and we could use it elsewhere. But if I delete this, it's not deleting the media entirely. It's deleting it from this particular project, okay, at this moment in time. Um, it's still shared, actually, with it, but it's, but, it's not but it's not present in the timeline. So that's now taken care of that. Now we can do the same thing here in the second video. It Run. So it will be interesting to see that there's a difference in how it goes down the slide, whether being heavier helps it go down or being lighter helps it go down. All right, so here we are, whether the hair gets in the way. <laughs> hmm, maybe we want to get it back. Lighter helps it go down. I'll go back on here a little bit of Susie there. Okay, so now we're going to try this one. And again, we'll do the same thing here, which is we've got that. We want to clip right there. And now get rid of the first half of it, delete it.
Now there are different things to handle the sort of gap or transition or however you want to refer to it between these two pieces of video. We've got them trimmed now and I think in this case maybe we'll do a bit of text. And what's neat about this is you just grab the text box in this case and you, you can do different types there, you know, lower third where they appear on the page and so forth. I'm just going to do regular old text. And I'm going to bring it down here and drop it onto a video track. And very simply, we're going to edit it. And when I double click on it, the word text appears and I'll type let's see the first one sunk and the second one didn't so let, I'll put let's try this again all right and again you can change all kinds of characteristics of the text and so forth but we don't need to do that right now uh, that works as it does in most software. And so maybe we'll bring these videos a little closer together. Maybe we'll bring them a lot closer together. Just need a short transition. And we do, however, you'll note that when I put the video over there, that you can see up here, if you look at it, you can see part of what I just typed behind Susie because the video isn't full screen. Uh, some of the videos are full screen in this collection, but since these are not, you see some of the text behind them. So that's not too great. So what we'll do is same thing we did with the others, which is go up. Good. As soon as we get to that point, we can actually clip this text box, delete the first, part and then and we could have moved it a little differently as well if we wanted to so now when it runs it goes like that and then we'll right where she transitions to the new one we will clip that and we'll take the last part of the text box out and that should get us pretty close to where we want to be. Now again, in the real world we do a much more complicated video and in the interest of time, let's try this again. Let's see how this one goes. And now, victory and the girl ending with it's very fast now all that's left to do is to finish the video and in this case we'll say that there are a number of different ways to do this and you see you can save to Vimeo YouTube Dropbox etc etc um, and at different levels it's free 480p and 720p you can get bigger it determines upon you know how many minutes and everything else in our case i want to save to drive google drive and i want to tell it to finish video so there we go now it's rendering and that'll take a minute something about 11 percent and that will be that, or 20%, and we'll be there soon. So, I hope you've taken something from this that you can use in your own work, in your own play, in your own practice. Again, my name's Scott, and thank you for spending some time with me.